DAV 360, we've been talking about it for years. Uh, it is ready. We are using it at headquarters now. We're going to go over a lot of stuff today. Uh, Katie, sitting right here, uh, she's our subject matter expert on DAV 360. She spent the last three years helping get this program in place. Uh, we've tried to make it, make it as great as possible. There's an update coming out in the next 45 days that's going to change some things that you wouldn't see. So we asked, uh, just right up front, I'm going to ask you, go back, you're welcome to use it. She's going to be sitting around a sheet with your, for your name and email. Make sure it's legible, please. And uh, we'll be sending you your usernames, passwords. Uh, give us a call if you have any problems. Uh, we'll take, take that. We're going to work our best to get through this and fix any type of concerns uh, you, you are, that may arise with this. Obviously, you know when you roll out a new program as complicated as this and complex, um, it's going to come with a little bit of bumps in the road. So please give me a call or give Katie a call or anybody on our team a call. Let us know what you're, you're finding, and we're going to work to fix it. I'm excited to roll this out because this is an opportunity for you as a volunteer to look at what you're doing, look at your accomplishments. Without what you do day in and day out, uh, this program wouldn't be successful. So I just want to thank you for volunteering every day. Uh, also on the stage this morning, I have uh, Kirk Johnson, who's on the Interim and Hospital Voluntary Services Committee, Jim Shuey, Silver Roya, and Nachi Miller. Um, these folks up here do a lot every day in their de departments and across the country with voluntary services, and we're working to try to make a difference. We want it to be an enjoy to volunteer. Obviously, it's a, uh, it's a wonderful time uh, to get in the hospital and visit with our patients. So without that, with, with that being said, we'll go ahead and get started. I went over a little bit of who this, our, our staff. Uh, most of you are familiar with uh, Odie, Connie, Nicole, and uh, Chris, our correspondents at headquarters. Uh, Connie handles our transportation network, as does Chris, and uh, Nicole handles our HSC and our LVAP hours. So a lot of you probably have talked to Nicole. And uh, Odie is a v the VAVS uh, representative uh, person who handles all your credentials and gets you certified as a, uh, a representative or um, any concerns you might have at your hospitals. Into uh, 360. So all your hours should be entered into DAV 360 whenever possible. Currently, I'm going to ask each and every one of you to continue to send us your stuff. Go ahead and log in, check it out. Let, just basic information I want you to put into DAV 360. Send it to our fax, our email address. You got our address if you want to put it in a mail with a uh, stamp. Uh, we're glad to take it and help you through that process. This is what the screen's going to look like when you, log, when you, when you go to www.mydav360.org. Um, in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a sign-in. You're going to click on that or hover there. You'll be able to log in. We've created accounts for each and every, every one of you. Okay. Well, I stand corrected. So once you contact us, we are going to create that account for you. I, I know we at one point in time talked about creating accounts. Um, but this is what it looks like. You're going to be required to enter a name, an address, phone number, and if they want to, if they want to receive our incentives. No last four. I repeat, no right. last four. All right? Here you go. Um, you'll get a username. We'll give you a password. There's our phone number to contact us, 877 Four two six two eight three eight extension one three one three, and then you're going to click the green button that says sign in. Looks pretty cool, doesn't it? Back up. All right. And when you put your name on that sheet. Katie will send you an email with this manual on how to use it. So you'll have it all in front of you when you get back home, okay? Am I, am I free to move on now? 
All right, cool. So here you go. You're going to look at the top, and I apologize if some of this is blurry because it's kind of difficult to get it perfect for everybody, but we've done our best to put this together. At the top, it says voluntary services. You're going to scroll down to manage volunteers. All right? So this is where you can go on and look at everybody you have in your facility if you have that permission. You'll see the facilities or the departments for which you have access to enter hours. So if you are in Virginia, you're not going to be able to enter hours for Texas, right? So you click on what you want to do. Of course, we got the Department of Virginia up there. They lead the way with LVAP, by the way. Anybody here from California? Yeah. That hurts, doesn't it, man? We're going to get you good. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you don't see a facility or department that you need access for, again, contact us. That number again is 877-426-2838, extension 1313. Under the facility for which you uh, have access for, you would click on the, this, in this example, it's Huntington VA Medical Center. You click on that facility at the very bottom you're then able to enter the hours for each person as a volunteer assigned to that facility. Okay, so the HSC would have access to input all of those hours. <clears throat> you're going to get a lot of information is going to come up on the next screen because every volunteer registered for DAV will be there. You will click on Joe Smith. You'll put his hours in the number of veterans he's transported. Everybody's going to come up alphabetically by their last name. All right? So last name, comma, first name. So does it allow you to go search at the top or something the last name to where it goes to it? Or you got to go all the way down? Yes, it's on the next slide. You'll see that, okay? Here you go. If you want to search them by name specifically, you can type in the first three letters of their first name, the, last, the, the first three letters of their last name, or spell it out in its entirety, and you'll be able to pull that person up. If you find that they're not there, let us know. We'll get them input and get our profile built and figure out what happened. But we, we input over... How many hours was it? There's more than... Almost nearly 300,000 names in here right now. So anybody who's volunteered in the last three years, uh, we have an inactivity tab for 13 months. Uh, there's a rationale behind all that, but there's a ton of information in here right now, okay? Um, so th this is how you can search uh, all your volunteers. If you do not find them or they're brand new, you're going to click Add Person. And you're going to, again, you got to have that critical information, their name, their address, and their phone number. No sensitive information will be stored in this database, okay? Again, type their first name, last name, click find, and you can add that person. Right in the lower right-hand corner, add new. If the volunteer already has a record in this program, you'll see their name in the search field. We just want to make sure you verify the address. Garbage in, garbage out with any database, okay? So take the time, make sure you're inputting the information on the right individual. If you make a mistake and put something in on the wrong person, give us a call. We'll take care of that, okay? Enter their role. What do they do? Uh, we want to really try to narrow this down and get into the crux of what's happening in the facilities. Are they, doing, are they just a transportation driver? Are they, uh, you know, a, a patient escort? Whatever their, their role is at the hospital, we're really trying to make this a more personal program. Um, there are selected boxes that you're going to click from. Please use one of those boxes. Um, enter the day that they became a volunteer. Uh, I want to send out emails to folks out of this program that says, thank you for volunteering. You're at your anniversary. Appreciate what you're doing. Uh, birthday greetings, if possible. I, I want to be able to do all those type of things. I'm really trying to make this a more personal uh, program to where I can have a, a better interaction with you as volunteers. John? Yes. 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 
Okay, uh, here, if the volunteer does not have an existing record in 360, again, I still need the form 20 completed and ask, you, ask that you fax it to me until the next update is run. Um, once the next update is run, you'll have, you can use it to, today if you like, but I'm asking you to wait because we're going to do a patch to fix some items that have, we, we, we've noticed as we're going through and using this daily. Uh, send this stuff by fax, email it to me. I, if you can, I really prefer you email it. It's just easier. Um, and we'll get the information put in there. And while you're on the phone, or you know, while we get an imp input, uh, or if you call us, we're glad to walk you through and talk about the, the program, okay? Ladies who answer the phone, Connie, Chris, Nicole, Odie, are, are very eager to get you guys using this program in its entirety. Scott? Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Katie. Um, <clears throat> so in the new DAV 360 system, what we have is a category for uh, non-DAV transportation. You would go in, click on that non-DAV transportation option, and you won't enter hours for them, but you will enter v veterans transported and miles because we do want to keep track of what's being done with our transportation network cars and vans even if it's not a, if they're not crediting their hours to DAV but we have that is something that we added to the system so we can keep track of that. Yes. No. No, but I can I can email them out with the user manual. So when you put your name on that sheet that's circulating around right where is it at right now? It's right here. Once you put your name on this sheet with your email, we'll go ahead and in incorporate a Form 20 with that, okay? Any other questions before I? Yes. I got here a few minutes late. That's okay. No, this will be for the local veterans assistance program. Any volunteering that you would do in the name of the DAV. Correct. Put your name on this little uh, sheet right here, and we'll uh, we can do all that for you. Check it out, okay? Sure, thank you. All right. Am I, can I move on? Did you get all the information you need off this slide? Yep. All right. Where, where are you? Do I have another question? Uh, yes. It's a it's it's a preform, so it should load it up the way it, it needs to be. Okay. Here you go again. No sensitive information is being asked of you. Uh, I know I've, I've, for the last few years I've told you I don't need the last four. Uh, so we still have dr people who think they have to give me their last four. I do not want that information. It's simply your name, date of birth, and address. Um, that way I can ensure I'm recognizing people for their volunteer initiatives, okay? Um, you'll see asterisks on the next um, run, uh, update that will, if you don't fill those in, it won't let you add somebody. So give me as much information as possible when it asks for it. it. Makes our job much easier to recognize people for what they're doing. Who in here doesn't have an email? Great. You don't have an email? Hey, let me sign you up for one before you leave today, okay? All right, so. <laughs> so. Here you go. Again, you're going to type the first name, last name, click find. Every, the reason we're asking you to do this every time is so we do not duplicate the information in the system. It's, it's very critical that you may ensure that you checked every possible way to ensure you're not adding another person. Uh, we, we do not want duplicate information in here. Uh, 
Once you find that person, click on their name. And then if it'll, it should have little tabs that tell you if something's missing. If something's missing, update that. Get that from that person while they're in your office, while you're interacting with them. Um, if you find out that um, you can't put that information in, call us. It could be a simple glitch. I mean, we worked very hard on this for three years to ensure it's got everything. But you can, you're, you're only as good as your users, okay? So if you find something, let me know. Yes, sir. Okay, so with this new system, and part of the reason we're asking you to c kind of click find and find the volunteer every time, what comes up when you go into a facility is the list of volunteers that have registered at that facility. So if the volunteer is registered at two different facilities, he'll come up in both facilities. You'll still be able to click on that volunteer's record and add it for that volunteer for that facility. You can't, um, once you go into the facility, it actually grays out the facility at the top. So you will have to go into one facility, find the volunteer and enter the hours, and then go into the other facility and find the volunteer and enter the hours. You can't enter hours for both facilities just by clicking on his name. Um, and that part of the reason we did that is to make sure that everything gets credited to the right place. Uh, but you will be, he will be under both facilities. You can add him into both facilities and enter it that way. No. No, you can look up the volunteers. Currently, you guys can't get into, but you, if you click on the volunteer's name, it'll bring up their record. It has a lifetime hours total for that volunteer. Um, and then the facility record also has a lifetime hours total for that facility. Mm -hmm. All right. So folks like Dick Marbs, who volunteers in multiple locations, he's volunteered in Milwaukee before Green Bay opened their facility. He, he would fall under both of those facilities, just like a lot of your drivers will do in the, in the Minnesota area. Hand, are we at? Yes, I'm sorry. Me? Yeah. Alan Thompson, Medford, Oregon. Uh, I have, within our chapter, I have a volunteer that volunteers at the hospital, but he has no computer expertise, etc. I just found out that his hours are not being entered at the hospital, and he hasn't been given me the hours either, except I can. Yeah, you can input his information into the into this database. But I'll tell you before, don't go back and put a, a huge number in. You give me, be honest with yourself and start from that day and move forward. I appreciate what he's done, but I don't need you to go in and I want it to be honest. I'm not saying you would be dishonest. Please don't take it that way, but start fresh and get his information. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. No, it's just only for DAV volunteers. This is not for Legion and other organizations. All right. Any other questions before I? In other words, when you volunteer with a Legion or the DFW, you should do it under the name of the DAV. No. No, I'm recognizing DAV volunteers who volunteer for DAV. I'm not recognizing the VFW. I'm not recognizing the American Legion, and I'm not tracking any of that stuff. No, I say we should volunteer under the name of DAV instead of VFW. I think so. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, come on over. We want you. So if they're, if they're volunteering for other organizations, they want to come to DAV, please come on over. Well, I want you to volunteer for us. All right? Okay, sir. All right, where are you at? Okay. All right, so good, good rule there, sir. Uh, if you have a question, please step up to the microphone so everybody in the room can hear it so we're not duplicating questions, okay? All right, here we go. 
So you select add, you're going to go put this new person in. A lot of this stuff is going to, you're going to see there, uh, there's a, a method to this madness, all right? It will pull up the location by default because of your permissions and your access. Uh, that can't be changed. If you need to enter hours for more than one facility, um, please continue to repeat those steps. There's no, you know, we, we, we want to capture everything under each facility. Pick the appropriate month from the drop down. Again, it, everything is populated. We've really tried to put all this information and make sure it's right the first time. It should default to the current year. So if you're trying to go back, I'm not asking anybody to do that, but uh, if you have a whole bunch of information on your desk that goes back from last year, it, you'll have to click on that year, okay? You should not be in information that is more than one year old. I don't want anybody going back to 2014 and putting information in there. All right? Start from January of this year and make your way forward if you got to go back and put stuff in, all right? Here you go, work type. So as you see the A on the top, that corresponds with the A on the bottom. I'm just, we, we couldn't find a way because this is such a lot of, this is so much information and it can be overwhelming. That marries up. So if you're, if you're, Putting a volunteer driver into the transportation network who donates your time for the DAV, you're going to pick transportation network from the drop-down box. Then the monthly hours should be input for that individual. If the volunteer does um, drives for the tra drives the transportation network, but they're not doing it in the name of the DAV, like we've had some questions here, you would use the beak scenario. You would put their hours and people transported, but you're not going, or the miles and the people transported uh, for, for our vehicles. And C, if the volunteer works to support the office and does not drive, you want to pick a non-driver category, okay, that goes into the patient escort, other type of activities. And then those hours should be entered for that individual. Does that make sense? All right. Again, same scenario, A matches with A, B, C, so on and so forth. The monthly miles driven for an individual should be entered, and the number of veterans transported should be entered. Again, it's a drop-down box. You just click on the, the number, or click on it, put the, put the figure in, hit save, all right? B, uh, if a person drives on their own, that's that category. And then C, again, non-transportation, all the other activities that are occurring in the facility. You'll see a box that says certified. You don't need to worry about that. We're going to take care of that for you guys, okay? There's a process that runs each night, so depending on what type you picked and certain other questions that we ask the system in the background, it will actually certify the hours overnight. So when you enter them the next day, if you go back in, it would say yes or no. Uh, but we want to allow that process to run and allow the system to actually automate that. So please don't pick certified or non-certified, just leave that one blank. Yeah, we want to do some work for you, okay? All right, entering any type of VAVS hours, again, if you're sending us your monthly reports, continue to do it, we're going to do it for you. If you run into a problem with it, please contact us at the 859 number, shoot us an email, whatever works for you. We're here to help and get you through this process, okay? Again, here's the main screen. This is what it looks like. There's going to be a lot of repetition through this. You're going to see there's, again, that method, all right? Click on the sign in button. Uh, you got, everybody got the, the link www.mydav360.org. Click sign in. And then here you go. You're back in this process again. We're entering. You get your username, your password, you're logging in to enter all your VAVS hours. Similar to a transportation network, right? Everything's looking identical. Right? Click in, you manage volunteers, type in the name, find the person or what, or excuse me, for what facility they're at. Click on that. All right, first question, I'm sorry. Dale Burke, Grand For oh, is it on? Dale Burke, Grand Forks, North Dakota. So if, it, if I go in here and it doesn't recognize me, doesn't accept my email, I'm not in the system, right? 
What'd you say? I if I okay, if I go in here and it doesn't recognize me, and then I put in my email and it says that it can't find my information, I'm not in the system yet, right? No, you, you may have the wrong. You may have a wrong email. You may have the wrong password. Contact oh. us and we'll find you. Okay. All right. Yeah, no kidding. That thing is moving. Did you see that? Wow. All right. Hey, Marianne. Hey, John. I have a couple of questions. Hi, Bob. Um, you know, we've had a lot of problems over this past year, as you well know, with the new system in the VA. And the hours have not been uh, generated the way they should have been generated. How do we handle that? I'm working on that for you guys, so don't, okay. don't worry about that. The VA just implemented a new system. We're right. implementing a new system. Uh, obviously, we got to get, get with the times. We're working on that, okay? Secondly, a lot of our reps are not here to be able to get this program, to know this program, and be able to generate their hours into the system the way they should be. Now, as state VAVS rep, I think we need to be going around to the hospitals to be able to indoctrinate our reps that are in the other hospitals. That's fine. I, okay. I, I would agree with you. But what we're going to do, I mean, you're getting this information here today. You're signing up on that sheet. I'm going to be doing a memorandum and emails coming out to everybody who's a VAVS rep, DEP, honorary rep, chair, whatever it may be. So they'll, they'll have, everybody will have this information, okay? Thank you. And, if, and, and please do travel. You know, you know you're oh, a very important volunteer. Get around, talk to folks about this stuff, okay, Marianne? All right. Any other questions? Step up to the microphone, sir. Fred Manning, Chapter 15, Hamilton, Ohio. We're having a lot of problems with the, like the, the paper forms. Mm -hmm. For volunteer hours. Closer to the mic, please. <clears throat> for volunteer hours. Okay. What do you do with the volunteer hours that's not going through the VAVS? The VAVS is just for hospital stuff. That's correct. So we, if, we if a person is donating their time in the name of the DAV through the local veterans assistance program, LVAP, it would still come through here. Okay, so when we when we put in like we do funerals and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Those hours would get put on the same thing here? Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Thank you. All of our volunteers will be in this program. So his, his question was, if, if they're volunteering outside of a VA medical facility, that falls under the local veterans assistance program, LVAP. We would still put their hours into this database where we can then recognize those individuals for their volunteer efforts, all right? Yeah, go ahead. Um, with VA, with LVAP and VAVS, you're actually going to see on some later slides, LVAP will be entered under the department. Um, part of what's coming out in our next update is we're actually going to be able to enter that at the chapter level as well. So you, if you're doing LVAP for a chapter, you can actually credit it to the chapter. It will roll up to the department. So the, both will, the department will still get credited for those hours. Now that is our next release. It's not this one. Right now it's currently under the department. But with LVAP, what you do is instead of going in and choosing the facility at the beginning, you go in and choose the department that they're, at, that they're um, crediting those LVAP hours to. That answer your question, sir? All right, again, everything's identical here. You're going for other, other hours through VAVS. You click on the location again. Uh, here we have Huntington VA Medical Center circled. All right, we're here. sorry, sir. Go ahead. Uh, Jerry Arnold. Department of California, please hold it, hold it against me. Okay? <laughs> uh, a question: uh, Some of us are, are volunteers um, at the, uh, in my case, the Palo Alto Healthcare uh, System uh, on the Focus Council. In fact, the, the new director has asked me to be, you know, try to advocate that the DAV encourages the formation of. of, of focus councils where all the various veteran service organizations get together. Uh, in the VA system, at least for myself, my experience, we, in their accounting system on the computer, they have both uh, the focus council, the VAVS uh, service, and they also have volunteer service where you can sign, where some of us sign my healthy vet 
uh, applications up and things like that. Uh, uh, do we account in both systems? Because uh, their hours are within the VA system and you probably obviously cannot get into their database. I, I, I get a letter from the VA at the end of their fiscal year that tells me how many hours were contributed in the name of the DAV for the DAV and the DAVA. Uh, so I get that letter, but I'm asking for you to get the information to us so I can specifically ensure the information we have is accurate and it mirrors what the VA has in their system. So if I'm hearing you correctly, we, we have to enter it while we're at the facility in the VA system, but when we get home or if we have a smartphone, we <laughs> enter these hours all in your system. So That is correct, or the HSC at that facility can get us that information, okay? Thank you, sir. No, thank you. Terry Singer, LVAP coordinator for Department 19, State of Maryland. This question may have been asked, but I don't hear very well, and my VA-issued hearing aids don't work very well either, so <laughs> I apologize. Back in February, I believe it was, we were told the computer was shut down, and we were told to send our LVAP hours into National mm -hmm. Volunteer Services. Now, obviously, they have not been entered into the computer because the software has not been available. Now, it's going to come online, so I imagine we are going to have to go back and enter all of those hours. No, sir. Back in February when I made that comment, it was because we put or we locked our access database where we maintain this information down. It's read-only. The information that we've received since that day has been input in a DAV 360. You don't need to go back and do anything if you sent us like we asked your information, okay? Okay. Then so when you go to log in, you should see all that information you've sent to us in 360 already. Okay. Okay? All right. Thank you. No, thank you. Morning, Sam. Good morning, John. Good morning, panel. I, uh, this has to do also with uh, volunteer drivers. <clears throat> With volunteer drivers, uh, I'm from New York. My name is Sam Antilla, uh, Chapter 92, New York. Uh, actually, we do have, um, the Northport is a great transportation. We're doing very good. Thank God for Northport, and that would be out of the loop. However, with the five boroughs, Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, and the Bronx, we don't have volunteer drivers because there's too many guidelines. Now, they, they do want to drive, as volunteers, but can you do something about these guidelines that they have? Okay, thanks, Sam. Uh, so he's talking about the some of the difficulties that are faced for the physicals and requirements to be a volunteer driver. I'm working to streamline that process and fix the process to make sure it's consistent across the country. O some occupational health departments at facilities do things a little bit different than others. Uh, we're working on a best practices protocol. That way we're consistent across the board. And I'm working to get something very similar to a disability benefits questionnaire, a DBQ. Some, most of you have probably heard that term yes. by our service program uh, that works for drivers and physicals so their primary care physicians can complete those. That Again, we're being consistent. I am working on it, Sam, working to fix the problem. Uh, I work daily with Sabrina Clark at VA Central Office to make the process as smooth as possible, okay? Yeah, because we're actually losing volunteer hours. I know you are. They, they're actually hiring outside. They have cabs to pick up and drop off patients. I mean, we, we're losing at the end. I, I understand, and I'm working to fix that, Sam. That's an issue, not just in New York, that happens all across the country. We're trying to fix that process. I am a... I'm a thorn in her side when it comes to onboarding volunteers, trust me. If you need me, I specialize in kneecaps. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Yes, sir. Richard Fournier, Department of Maine. One thing I was wondering if you could do when you talk to them on the physicals, because we got a problem up there in Maine, is have an appeal system that we can appeal it to another doctor, because the doctor we got is scared to put their name on that physical should rather fail you than let you drive. Well, again, I'm working to make the process as streamlined as possible and ensure that it's consistent practice across the country. I'm aware that some doctors are more difficult than others. Um, again, I continue to be a thorn in Ms. Clark's side to ensure 
that our volunteers get onboarded. But I want to say something to everybody. If they're not safe and they can't pass a physical, I don't want them driving a vehicle because I don't want anybody to be injured. But I want it to be fair. All right? So we're working to fix that. Hopefully we'll see some uh, resolution by the end of the year. I, I'm aware of the problem in Maine. I understand the problem in New York. And there's, you know, some problems in Alabama, problems in Texas. We're working to fix those problems, okay? All right, I'm going to go ahead and go on. Again, you're entering VAVS hours under that facility for which you have permission to do so. Again, you're going to see a list of all the registered volunteers for that facility. This is a repeat of just what we did for Transportation Network. Everybody keeping up with that? Again, if you want to search somebody by name, put their information up there. You do not need to put their entire name uh, to search. The first three letters of the first name, first three letters of the last name, hit fine. It'll bring everybody who fits that category up. Once you find that person, if they're, or once you see that they're not in there, add that person. Again, make sure you put all the information that is required. Name, address, phone number, date of birth, an email. Some, that, that way we have that information and we can make contact with them. Everywhere I go, People tell me, I'm not receiving credit for my volunteer hours. And I find out sometimes we're not getting that information. I want to fix that, okay? Yes, ma'am. Becky Smith, Chapter 45, Clarksville, Tennessee. I have people, okay, now you're saying we don't have to do the last four. That's great. But I even have somebody that says they don't want to give their birth date. So can I still add them, even though they're, I don't have a birth It's date not required. Okay. But if I got a Billy Smith and you got three of them, so... Man, I don't, what is, I, the, <laughs> thank you. Again, you type their first name, last name, click find. You'll, you'll see all your history will show up down. It says recent contacts. You'll see all the people that you've looked up, all right? So if it's somebody you know, you know they're in there, you can always click there to find them again. Once you, once you find them and they have a record, you'll be able to verify. Again, you want to verify the information. If I got garbage in, I'm going to get garbage out. I want this to be a wonderful database that you can go through and talk about these people. You have a ceremony that might take place at your facility, and you want to recognize somebody who's been volunteering for 25 years. You're able to go back and see all that information. Give accurate data to the program managers, to the directors. <clears throat> Again, you're going to enter their role, and you're going to click save and close. Remember to save your information. I'd hate for you to put all the stuff and not save it. Again, here's our number, 859-442-2088. That's the facts, I'm sorry. It's, a more, it's early, guys. Um, send us the information at the address there or shoot us an email, vavs at dav.org, okay? Here we go again. again. Name, date of birth. If they don't want to put it, it's not required. Uh, address, state, zip code. Uh, email's not required, but I would really want to get that email information. I want to have a more intimate relationship with everybody who volunteers. I want to recognize them on an anniversary date, on their birthday, I want to just, Thanksgiving, Christmas, whatever it may be, I want to be able to interact with you guys. Yeah. One thing I want to mention, too, with the email, we are working towards, it's a, not, um, it's going to be in a future release, and we're not sure exactly when, but we are working towards the volunteers actually being able to go into the system themselves, look up their hours, look up their information. They will not be able to enter their own hours but they will be able to see what information we have on them, how long they've been volunteering, what hours they're doing, what awards they should be receiving, if the award has shipped, if it was delivered. We, we want them to be able to manage their own information other than ours. So without an email address, they will not be able to do that. You cannot sign into the system without an email address. So again, that's really neat information here. You, I want you to be able to see the milestones you've achieved. But data integrity comes an issue. That's why you can't enter your own information. 
And then I want to know if you're getting your stuff. I have people who don't receive their items. We go back and find out something occurred. There was a glitch. I want to get you what, you're, what you've earned, okay? Again, you're clicking on their name. You see, you, you'll see it'll look just as this. Um, click add, any information, their hours, which facility they belong to. And you, you, again, a drop down box will occur. The month, year, work type, VAVS, number of hours, and then they're going to hit save and close. Similar to the transportation network, A goes with A, B goes with B. If the volunteer donates their time to the DAV, pick VAVS from the drop down box. The monthly hours volunteered by the individual should be entered. No miles will be entered under a VAVS category because it's outside of the transportation network. It has its own category, right? If the volunteer donates their time to the DAVA and picks the VAVS auxiliary from the drop-down box, their hours that they volunteer should be entered for that individual. Any questions about that? Step up to the microphone. Microphone, sir. Uh, sir. Microphone, sir. Sir, I understand uh, the birthday greetings and that sort of thing, and you know the question's going to come up when we deal with the volunteers. Will you be sharing that with the fundraising arm of DAV? No. no. All right. Veterans transported. No, vet, no veterans transporters should be entered under the VAVS category. That's DAV transportation, all right? Uh, again, the certified button comes up. Don't do anything with that. We are going to run a report every night. I think it's at midnight, 11, midnight, whatever the time may be. It will run that report and certify all those hours for us. All right, LVAP. It's going to look just the same. Again, it's, you're noticing a trend, right, guys? So entering the local veterans assistance program hours. Again, this is a database for everything volunteer related. You can send the information to us until we run the next update, then you'll be able to input that information. If you find this too complicated, continue to send us the information the way you do it and we're going to take care of it for you. This is what it's gonna look like again, sign in. There's your username and password, I'm not gonna keep this is exactly what it'll look like. You'll, you'll find the department for what you have. Uh, it's right there in the middle, departments for LVAP hours. You'll see the Department of Virginia. Click, it, click on the department. There's your list of volunteers again. So if they've VAVS, Transportation Network, LVAP, they're going to be in this list. Search for the individual. Add the person if you need to. Search by the first last name. Everything's repeating itself. It's identical to every other practice we have. Um, click save and close. Once you find their, the individual, we'll, we'll still continue to need this form. If you do not want to use this product, this program, send it to us. We're going to take care of that for you. Again, these are the items that are required. First, middle, last name. No date of birth required. Again, you're going to enter their LVAP hours. There are people who transport veterans via the LVAP program. I don't recommend it, but I understand it happens because of the liability issue. You're welcome to do what you want to do. I don't need to know about it, but please be careful. Uh, put this information in. Save it. These are, these are LVAP work opportunities. How many chapter service officers are in the crowd? I know every one of you is reporting your hours through LVAP, right? I got a no right here. You, you need to be reporting your hours under the LVAP program, okay? Um, how many of you got a 5K in your city? A 5K, a DAV 5K. Are you reporting your hours for that through LVAP? You need to, all right? Thank you for doing that. Um, 
outreach events, air shows, uh, job. How many, career, how many of you had a career fair or job fair in your area? Have you gone out to help for that? Are you reporting your hours under LVAP there? I got. She stopped shaking her head. Yes. <laughs> you need to be doing it that way as well. Okay. Um, who's done a forget me not drive? Yeah. All right. Have you done your LVAP hours for that? Yes. All right. Awesome. Yes, sir. George Baker, Huntsville, Alabama, uh, Chapter Twenty Six. Uh, can you add a work type? No. Or, Okay. If, if there's something comes up that you think needs to be added, contact us. We'll, 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 we'll vet that because okay. everybody does it a little bit different. I think you'll find a category that just about covers everything, but uh, you can't add a work type. All right. Well, let me give you a quick example. We have uh, in our chapter, we have the relief committee where veterans can come in <clears throat> that fall a little short on their utility bills, their rent. And, and we also support HUD best. Okay. Where would that go? Outreach. DAV outreach. Make sense? Not really, but. Well, time you're promoting the name of the DAV or doing professional assistance to the name of the DAV, I consider that to be outreach. Uh, that's where I would put a, a homeless stand down. I, I do a homeless stand down DAV headquarters. I would consider that outreach. I'm promoting the name of the DAV and I'm providing outreach and assistance to people. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Alice Thompson, Chapter 8, Medford, Oregon. Uh, we do the Blue Star, Gold Star. Would that be under DAV outreach then, or is there enough of us uh, that that actually could be added as uh, something to that whole list? Well, it could be a, 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 general, a general DAV LVAP uh, category that exists there. So long as you're reporting those hours, I'm fine with that. I, I want to capture it. Um, I, if I were to make a list for everything, I mean, you'd, be, you'd still be scrolling through that trying to find a place to put it. So I, I've, I, we've really thought this through. I feel that outreach pretty much covers just about anything. And when it comes to specializing like the fundraising or the, excuse me, the forget-me-nots, uh, the 5K, uh, the, those things are very specific type events, okay? Uh, how many benefits protection team leaders do I have in here? We, we put the category up there for you guys as you're lobbying and talking to individuals about our legislative goals. Um, we, we actually do a mentorship program. Uh, you saw that in Barry's presentation about, uh, you know, we're working to try to partner up a newly injured veterans with some of our senior leadership, our former national commanders who've live high quality lives, we want to partner those people up. So we do something along those lines. Yes, sir. In Jerry Arnold, Chapter 11, Department of California. Uh, uh, really quick, I don't want to dilute what you're do doing now. I think it's wonderful that you, you, you've put this effort in. Uh, my question is, is really fundamental. Uh, we have an older chapter with older uh, veterans. Uh, we do not have as, uh, any DAV vehicles available. And yet, there are volunteers that are happy to serve veterans. And when we go to the clinics, we go to the hospital, there are GSA licensed vehicles, the government vehicles, that rest, rot, and rust. Is there some way when you're talking to the VA or your legislature that you can find a way that volunteers can go through, be certified to drive government vehicles so we can get our veterans to their doctor's appointments. It's really sad that, that 12 or 15 SUVs sit every day there, and if there was a way to qualify drivers and have a procedure for them to be able to check out these vehicles, we could get veterans to their doctor's appointments rather than have them wait one, two hours for outreach or paratransit. Thank you. That's a good question, and, and I just, the answer is already, if they are a volunteer already and they've been credentialed to drive vehicles, they can drive those vehicles. They all fall under the same umbrella. What, sir? Let me, before, when I leave here today, I want to get your information, okay? Yes. Uh, my question under mentorship, does that, that's um, the same as being a mentor at the Veterans Court? At the uh, yeah, for veterans court, court, court. Veterans court treat, or veterans treatment courts? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and also, I I don't see anything. Where where is your uh, fundraiser? 
part the, come in there? The, the DAV 5K, or excuse me, the Forget Me Not drives, that, that's fundraising. Yeah, well, all right, we have Golden Corral fundraising the, too. Yep, you could put that as outreach. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what, we'll do a, I'll get a fundraising one for Golden Corral up there, okay? Uh, according, according to our, uh, our adjutant, which is very up on this, he does all the uh, LVAP hours and all that stuff. He already has that on his. What was that again, sir? He already has that on his paperwork okay. as volunteers for um, uh, fundraising. So that's he's, fine. I will he's get reporting that, I, it. I don't know how he's doing it, but he's reporting. Okay, it. I will add that category for you, though. We'll get that taken care of. I got April there in the back. She's making notes about things that come up. Okay. Okay, yes, I'm a volunteer driver. I'm Glenn Turner from Chapter 117, California. I've had my van, I say my van, Del Norte County, the extreme northern county of California, taken away a year ago last May. I have been to two state meetings, brought it to their attention, talked to the transportation people, and I still don't have a van. Could I get some support? I don't know why they took away your van. That sounds like a department issue that's not dealing with me. But okay, I'd be glad to talk with you about How do I go about, about putting pressure on these people where I can get a van back to help my brothers? That's fine. When we get done, come talk with me. I'll get you information and okay. see what I can do to try to help you, okay? I'd appreciate that. All right, Thank sir. you. John Larry Hill, the adjutant from Wisconsin. Uh, just one quick question. Uh, the new initiative coming down, uh, help a vet, is that going to be uh, come a separate category or is that going to be part of the DAV outreach? Are you talking about volunteerforveterans.org? You got it. Uh, that we'll we'll track that in in this cat one of these categories that exist here. Okay. Okay. Thanks. It's just going to be basic LVAP, but we'll we'll specialize for people who have plumbing license, electricians, attorneys, those type of people with special certifications. <clears throat> Again, professional help, like I just talked about, people uh, um, plumbers. Electricians, people who have special certifications, attorneys who donate their time for veterans treatment court to help dismiss misdemeanors, small things along those lines. Again, very familiar to everybody. you've already seen this. It, so coming soon, we got that change. We've talked about it when I first started this morning. We got an update coming. It's gonna you won't be able to see a change, but we're gonna see a change on our end. So right now, enter the basic information. If you're not comfortable doing it, contact us. We're going to walk you through it, but we'll get that information input for you, okay? The ALVEP hours will be able to go into the chapter, which will then roll to the department like Katie indicated earlier. That's an update coming. Once all those hours are input, they'll roll up. The department will get credit. Therefore, they can be recognized as the division leader uh, here at the uh, National Convention. If you want to do a bulk, a bulk entry, okay, would you speak about this one? Yes, absolutely. So as I'm sure most of you are aware, we do have some volunteers that they not only want, don't want to give us their date of birth or their address, they don't even want to give us their name. Um, so for those hours, we tried to find a way, in our old system, we entered it in at voluntary service under a category that was just miscellaneous, and it was basically a volunteer record that had the facility n number and said miscellaneous for the last name, and that's how we captured those hours. Once this release comes out, we're going to be able to do what's called a bulk entry. It will actually be entered on the facility record. So you'll go into the facility record, um, you'll be able to bring up that facility record and just add the hours there as a bulk number. So if you have 10, 10 volunteers who don't want to give you their name and they did 150 hours for the month, you can enter it in for the month, enter the 150 hours, and the facility will get credit for it, and then we get credit for it as well. Um, we are actually losing quite a bit of hours that way, not being able to, to have somebody's name. So, And we do ask, if somebody does come to you and say, I don't even want to give you my name, I don't want any credit, please at, just explain to them that we don't send them anything other than our incentive awards. We don't sell their information. We don't do anything like that. We just want to be able to recognize them, have them get our incentives, and be able to say thank you. You guys do so much for the veterans in your community and for DAV and for the VA 
we want to be able to say thank you. So try to explain that to them. If they still don't want to give you the name, you can do it here um, as a bulk entry. And we will update the DAV 360 manuals to include that information. We're just not totally sure how exactly it's going to look yet. So I didn't want to add something in there and then have it be different once the, once the update came out. All right, thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Question, John. Will the message now change on the hsc.dav.org? Because when we go to that now to do our driver's hours or volunteer hours, uh, and it says you have to fill out this other form that you sent us and fax it or email it, are you going to change the message on that screen to yes. redirect us to uh, 360 and how to get there and how to sign yes, in? Yes, we'll, we'll change For people that, that aren't here? Uh, we will change that to where they can go in and put this information here. We have some HSCs who are probably not going to try to change and conform with this. They can continue to send it the way they're doing it now. I just want it to be whatever works for these folks out here, I want to make it work for us. We'll be able to do then the August report on 360. October report you'll be able to do on three, in 360. Okay, so we won't be able to do it till October. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Alice Thompson, Medford, Oregon, Chapter 8. Uh, this is kind of going backwards to one of the earlier slides. Uh, we have volunteers of our DAV chapter that go out to assist veterans as uh, caregivers. Mm -hmm. They don't get paid anything or any of that. Uh, how should they go about reporting? Is that also a DAV outreach? Yes, that would be LVAP or, and under the outreach program. Thank you. Thank you. So the Jesse Brown Memorial Youth Scholarship application um, that's available online? So in November, when we do the memorandum that goes out to all the department leadership, our HSCs, you will be able to log in online and recommend a young, a young individual to input their hour or input their information to be nominated for the scholarship. But make sure you're mindful and tell them they need to give 100 hours to the name of the DAV in order to, to be eligible for that scholarship, okay? And it's very, once they put a date of birth, if they're 33 years old, it's going to tell them they're not eligible. So... It's, it, it, it stops you as you go. If you don't meet a criteria, it'll end. Same with the uh, George H. Seal Award nominations. In November, when Mark sends out his memorandum for all, requesting all your help to find folks, they'll be able to log in and do it this way. Um, we'll send out more instructions once it's available. Or it'll come in uh, with a link on the memo that comes out from Mark. Um, we're just trying to get all, put all our eggs in this basket so we're able to keep up with these profiles. So if you have somebody who logs in, it's a youth, they got 300 hours, they should have a profile in the system and make it easier for them to uh, self-nominate for the scholarship. <clears throat> so that list is floating around. Katie's gonna do on her end. We're gonna send it to you guys if you put your name. If you have any questions or need anything, write her email down give us a call we'll send you exactly what you need the people who you want doing this information um, we'll get them their permission set up and do what we need to do yes Wanda I have a few questions that I've been saving up here um, if people volunteer in more than one office that gets entered with their hours where they're volunteering or does that get entered with their name and if it gets entered with their name do you have to have more than one entry for that person for that facility no, their profile, if they're, if they're assigned to two facilities, they get one profile, it will credit wherever they, they put it. But, not, well, for instance, me, for example, and there's others in our state, they volunteer in more than one office in the same facility? Yep. Uh, more than one office in the same, do you mean like they do transportation network and VABS? Yes. You can actually, you will be able to enter that once you go into the facility, if, the, if they have transportation network hours and VABS hours, you can enter them both right there. You'll have okay. to create one record, save and close, and then create another record for them. But you don't have to back out and go back into the facility again and do everything. You can enter it under that veteran. Now, if it's LVAP hours, 
and VABS hours, then you have to go into the department rather than right. the facility. Okay. Um, if you if somebody updates their address or email or something and they have LVAP hours and hospital hours, do you have to update both no. or will they correlate? You'll update that on the volunteer record, so it will happen for that volunteer no matter where they work. Great. Okay. Um, DAVA reports their hours through DAVA and not through me. Will that change with DAV 360? That will depend on how you guys do it in your state. Okay. Um, we can have multiple people reporting for the same facility, though. So if you if you do transportation network hours and Sally does okay. auxiliary hours, you can all get in. I just need everybody's name to get them a login. Okay. Um, you had a... Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Um, That's a question. <laughs> uh, what she asked was if someone has, um, works in multiple offices in the same VA facility, so if they work, if they have transportation network hours and they have VABS hours in the same VA facility, you can report that right there under that facility. So you don't have to go back out and go back in. But if they have LVAP hours and VAVS hours, you will have to go back out to that screen that shows you where the departments and facilities are and choose the department rather than the facility. We don't want LVAP hours reported under the facilities. Now we do, we do have the ability at national headquarters to run reports, so if we see that happening, we can correct it and give the person a call and just kind of walk them through how to do it correctly. What else, Wanda? You're about to reach your quota. Yeah, yeah I got two more. Um, so I and others in my department, and I suspect other large, large area departments have more than one person working with legislators, but your um, pick list said that the benefits and legislation was only creditable to the, the department lead? It's credit to anyone that's on the benefits protection team. Okay. So if they're doing that, they can enter it. We just don't want, we're trying to capture how much how many hours are being worked under that program, so we only want them entered for that program. Okay. And then in the, in the past system, the old system, if you found an error in an entry, you could not go back and correct a past entry. Will we be able to do that with the new system? We can. We'll be able to correct it. We can correct the error. Okay, so, so we let you know. Us. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully we can open that up at some point, um, but we just want to kind of get into the system and get ready and, and see everything, and then we'll... <laughs> We'll work on that. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. No more questions, Wanda. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, Sam Blow, Department of Pennsylvania. I just want to get some clarification uh, on, on some statements that you made about yes, that a recording of, of hours of uh, basically unknown individuals uh, that don't want to give any information. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, I'm, I'm a little concerned about that because how, how do you account for that if you don't have a name or any information? I mean, well, there, there's something, that, something just don't seem right to me on that. No, I would agree, and I don't understand why people don't want to even give us their name. Exactly. People want to know the truth of the matter, but we, there are folks that are that I, private. private or skeptical or what, I don't know, I, uh, that will not give us their information. But they are doing their stuff, so they're a, and lack, I don't know another way to say it, but they're a tick mark. They're somebody that is doing something that just will not give us all that information. We're trying to break down the barrier or a wall that mm -hmm. people have a perception that we're selling their information. We are not doing that. We do not sell our information. Mm -hmm. um, I understand the concern with the last four of a social security number with, uh, you know, data integrity right. and, and cyber, th cyber threats and things that occur. But... Well, I'm trying to keep that to a minimum. I'm hoping that we're gonna we're coming around that corner where people are gonna trust us, give right. us their name, yeah, and let us recognize them for their efforts. Yeah. Well, I mean, can we re make some kind of a requirement of some some minimal information? I mean, so that we can account. I mean, if you question me about a bunch of hours that uh, uh, um, that I report, um, and I say that well, I got five unknown individuals that volunteered, uh, I, I just feel a little uncomfortable. I, I understand. If somebody didn't want to give you their, their information, then okay. I wouldn't count them. That's just my, this stuff goes back 20 some odd years ago. I'm just yeah. trying to maintain the data that I've inherited and received mm -hmm. 
and ensure I have a category so I can be consistent with what I'm reporting. Thank you. All right. Good morning, Silva. John, a quick one up here now. And I'm hard, having a hard time understanding this slide because it says send the following information to K. Jopinger. Mm -hmm. That's her. Uh, That's me. Hi. Hi. Is everybody in this room going to send her this email or there has to be some authorizing person that says this person is going to do LVAP. This person is going to do VAVS, and this person is going to do transportation. Each person can't decide that for themselves. You're right. The, the, uh, at, during CNA, we had a lot of the commanders and adjutants stop by. They give us their information, who's going to be doing this stuff. We get them their credentials. In, the, in full transparency, we're trying to let people know if they send us this stuff, we will, ve we will verify if they have access or not through the department leadership and ensure that only the people who have access get what they need. Well, does department leadership know now that they're going to have to do this? Because right now, Department of Florida is the only one who can submit LVAP hours. That's correct. Correct. A Andy's Andy Marshall is aware of everything that, that's related up here. Is that going to stay? Yes. Yes. And, and then why do we have this up here if you're showing this as doing the uh, LVAP hours, send it in? That should only be done with departments if only departments are doing that. Well, I'm trying to encourage chapters to get an LVAP coordinator. It, there's, it's just a communication and transparency, that's all. If a chapter has an LVAP coordinator, can that chapter now submit LVAP hours to national? They would go to the department. We will roll that up and make sure that it's L legitimate. That's where it's confusing. Okay. That's all I'm saying. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be confusing. I'm okay. just trying to disclose everything. Okay. If the department says that... The, uh, yeah. Say. That's rich. Rich. The way that will work is it is going to be up to the State Department who they want to enter LVAP hours. If they want everything reported to the department first and a department person to enter that information, that's how they'll do it. If they want to elect a, an LVAP coordinator in each chapter and have they the chapters enter it individually, we can do that too. But okay. it's up to the State Department to set that policy. Okay. Now, because transportation network hours were always traditionally done by the HSC. Correct. Correct. Now, is that still going to be the, uh, yes. the HSC is the one who has to sign in? Yes. yes, and we know who those HSCs are already. They're already marked in the system. So if they send us someone who isn't an HSC, we will verify with you guys first that they, that they should be able to get in. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. Is that okay, Rich? You like that? The better answer? Yes, sir, Mr. Plummer. Okay, on these HSCs. Please, please hang on. <laughs> Maybe it's better that you don't hear me. <laughs> no, the HSC. Well, that's not on. You're here. on, Harlan. Go ahead. On. Yeah. on your HSCs, it used to take care of the drivers in our, our hospital. Now then they stop that, and I'm going over to volunteer services and get the copy from them and send it to you. Is that all you need? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Harlan. Yes, ma'am. Medford, Oregon, Chapter 8, Alice Thompson. Uh, again, first off, I want to say thank you very much for holding this. This is my first time at a convention. It's been very educational. I also want to say to Wanda Janice, thank you for the wonderful work she does at the department level for us. And, but for all of us here, one of the things I'm seeing is this is giving a, us a better understanding whether we send it to the department or whether we send it or do it at the chapter or we do it at the national level. And I wish we had more of this going on. Uh, my other question is that uh, if, say, the department does assign this to, uh, to me as a chapter to fill out, uh, is there any guidelines or is this book that you're sending out, the uh, 360, going to give guidelines that I could, at, 
as a chapter commander, then appoint somebody and, and pass it over to them um, so that they could report correctly? Yeah, what we would do in that case, if, if the chapter, if the department decides that they would like chapters to do the reporting, the chapter would then, with the department's permission, be able to pick who, whomever they want to enter stuff into the system. And like I said, we can also have more than one person. So if you enter the information and Wanda is your backup when you go on vacation, we, you would both have a unique login so we know who's entering those hours and when they were entered. Thank you. But all of that will be confirmed by the department. So if it's a chapter, if you go in and enter 5,000 hours for a day, the department's going to come say that's, there's no way that's possible. So it's, it's a series of checks and balances to make sure that the information is accurate and data integrity is maintained. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> Bob Kelper, uh, DAV Chapter 17, Hammond, Indiana. The reason that I'm, I want to know if everybody can hear me is because I'm a former, I am a broadcaster for Veterans View Radio Show, the longest radio show in the country. We're live on Fridays between 9 and 10. <laughs> and anybody that has any, any input, it's 219-845-1100, the longest veteran show in the country. Now, I have a question for the uh, committee here on transportation. Mm -hmm. If someone's interested in transportation, and uh, uh, how can I have them uh, get in touch with transportation to get them on board? Okay, uh, so Adam Benjamin is uh, lacking people, uh, volunteers, and uh, that's my first question. Okay, well, I just sent out, a, uh, Mark, excuse me, Mark just sent out an email uh, to everybody, department leadership, about recruiting volunteer drivers and what's required. It's a volunteer driver toolkit. It was sent to uh, Mr. Coley who should have access to it. Your hospital service coordinators in your prospective state will have access to it. Uh, it's the uh, best practices for recruiting drivers. So that just went out last week? Last week. Okay, now another thing on, uh, tr on uh, um, this no name stuff. Okay. You're supposed to put no name, no address, no so for the social security, and then put 100 hours, 500 hours. How does that work? Go ahead. No, it's not. There's no, it won't be an individual volunteer record. And to be honest, this happens more at VA facilities than it does with our LVAT program. The VA is tracking who those people are, but those people do not want the VA to tell us. So the VA gives me a bulk number of hours that says there, there are five people at our facility that don't want us to pass you our information. They worked 150 hours. We put those 150 hours in under the facility. But the VA is verifying those hours. The people just don't want us to have their information. For whatever reason, they want to volunteer for the DAV and credit us with their hours. They don't want us to know who they are. So everybody knows that if they go and do their hours, the VA is, knows about that. That's correct. correct. Okay, does everybody know about that now? <laughs> and comfortable with that? 219, <laughs> that's 219-845-1100. You can go to a Facebook, go to WJOB, and see me live personally in the studio. One more thing, Sam. Where's Sam? What happened to Sam? He, he's the one who uh, replaces his kneecaps. Yeah, he's, he's out taking care of I break them. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, this is John Martinez, uh, Chapter 2, Pueblo, Colorado. Uh, on that same subject that was just brought up now, on those hours, uh, why couldn't there be a code put in by the VA or whoever's doing it? to identify that individual without having that individual's uh, information coming forward. This way, with a small code sent up there, it could be verifiable 
and that will eliminate fraud. Well, you know, I'm not worried about fraud being a case. I get a letter signed by the Director of Voluntary Services at VA that we use for auditing purposes. So I don't take any more credit that's already get, than given to us, okay? I'm just trying to ensure that I capture the information on everybody. There's no, there is really not a concern with a ghost and fraud or anything along those lines with people who don't want to give me the information. I have a paper trail and audit that covers us for that, okay? Okay. Yes, sir. Terry Singer, LVAP coordinator for uh, State of Maryland. I resurrected the LVAP program two and a half years ago for the state, and ever since then, I've been asked to do something which I don't feel I can do. The program is Disabled American Veterans LVAP program. And if the auxiliary members assist with something, we, I can designate them in the computer with the letter A behind their name as an auxiliary member. But I keep getting harped on that I'm supposed to maintain the auxiliary unit's uh, hours. Now, there's no way in the program to segregate those hours out for the units in the state, correct? In this, in this program, there is an auxiliary tab. Only for VAVS. Only for VAVS. Okay, the, 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 VA, the DAVA does not have an LVAP program. DAV has an LVAP program. That's what I've been trying to tell them. Okay, I'll be glad years. to meet with whoever your leadership is in the Department of Maryland and discuss that, okay? But they told me that they got word from National that I'm supposed to be doing this for the auxiliary. Of when the we state. get done, if you'll come visit with me and give me the names of the people who told you that, I'd be glad to visit with them, okay? Okay, but are you saying in the 360 we're going to be able to record the auxiliary units hours as a separate unit? Uh, the auxiliary can c report those hours. There is an auxiliary tab for VAVS only. Again, LVAP does not exist for the DAVA. Okay, that's what I thought. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hello, yes, sir. My name is Jeffrey Belay. Go ahead, sir. Hello, my name is Jeffrey Belay, and I'm with the state of Washington, Chapter 9. I could get closer to the mic. I can barely hear you. Yeah, I'll probably have to turn it up. There we go. My name is Jeffrey Belay from the state of Washington, Chapter 9. And I'm wondering about the LA, uh, yeah, the LBAP, uh -huh. about the hours. Does all the chapters call, do we, do we get their hours from them? Is that what we do? I guess I'm not understanding what you're well, asking here. I'm a coordinator for, I'm the junior by the state of Washington. Okay. Also, so I'm in charge of that to be able to get all their hours and all, right. all that stuff. So I'm new at this. So I'm okay. Learning. I'm learning, so that's why I'm asking questions. Well, get with me after this, or Katie, and we'll help walk you through that process. Okay, that okay. sounds great. Thank, Thank you so you. much. I'm just curious, is the sign-up sheet still working its way around because it hasn't reached the back Who's yet? got the sign-up sheet? Who's got the sign-up sheet? There you go. All right, any other questions? Oh, uh-oh. <coughs> well... Go ahead. Alice Thompson, Chapter 8, Medford, Oregon. Uh, can you clarify? That is. Go ahead. Can you clarify a little bit on that legislature uh, element? Uh, like you say, there's that uh, this team, but uh, what are you looking at as considered as legislature, say at the chapter level that you want? us to report hours it's on. very easy every department has a person who's been asked to be a benefits protection team leader in their perspective departments those individuals know exactly what they're doing Jim Shuey is a benefits protection team leader in Nebraska we're only tracking the times that he's advocating on a grassroots effort for legislative goals and objectives inside that in their department if somebody is not the benefits protection team leader they they have no idea what what's going on with that Jim, would you elaborate a little bit on what your duties are as a BPTEL? As, as BPTEL. Here. In, in Nebraska, we have uh, split it up a little bit. We, we were advocate both at the state level 
with our unicameral, uh, which is unique to Nebraska, as well as with our DC headquarters. I primarily work with the DC side of things as the BPTL. We have another person who works primarily with the state legislatures, uh, advocating stuff, uh, trying to get people to get into the Commander's Actions Network, things like that. We also put out a periodical newsletter when needed. We send out flash bulletins through our mass mail email system to apprise people when they need to get in contact with their representatives on issues that are uh, of importance to, to the state and to all the veterans. In particular, uh, the IU and all of those. Sounds like the uh, road. Yeah, so, so that's the, uh, the purpose of the BPTL is to advocate both at the state level and at the national level on behalf of veterans. Uh, and it's coordinated through myself and try to get, uh, we've tried to place at least one person in each chapter as a, my contact uh, to get it pushed down further to the, uh, to the individual levels in the state. But my guess, department. just to elaborate a little bit on that, my guess is that the benefits protection team leaders' LVAP hours or th their efforts are, are going to be minimal almost. Uh, it's a, a great effort. I'm not trying to minimize it, but the hours aren't going to be as large as I think they would be for other opportunities that exist. Thank you, Jim. Yes, ma'am. Diane Smith, Chapter 27, New Jersey. I was wondering, uh, with the LVAP coordinator, would that be any specific position that is held? Like, is that the job of the adjutant or the second vice, or is it just anybody that will take the job? Well, I made a recommendation for the last few years that at the department level, the department picks somebody to be the LVAP coordinator. I made a recommendation to be the junior vice commander. And then I, from that, the department would appoint somebody to a chapter or, or along those lines. So you put you got somebody working at all for you. So it gives you an opportunity to network as a junior vice commander, promote LVAP before you step into your senior vice commander role, which is traditionally your membership chairman. So to help build that networking opportunity. So it's up to the department who they appoint, but I have recommended to all the departments, make it your junior vice commander, give them something to do and promote the LVAP program that way, okay? Is that on a chapter level also? That could be the same for the chapter as well. Thank you. Fred Manning, Commander Service Officer for Chapter 15. Closer to the mic. It's Fred Manning, I'm Commander of Chapter 15 in Hamilton, Ohio, also a service officer. I have my adjutant collect all the volunteer hours. He's, we lost a lot of hours because we were told to send them to state. Okay. Okay. Now we're being told we have to send them to national. So now we're, now we're getting our hours put in, but we were told originally to send them to state. Well, I, I can't control how the department runs their, oper their, their business. Uh, I, I, I asked them to do whatever they can to get me the hours because I want to recognize everybody for their volunteer efforts. I'm not, I'm not up here telling the departments to change what they're doing. I'm, I'm telling them that we have these opportunities. We want to fix this. We want to recognize everybody. If they need us to do the bulk entry for them, send it to us. We are glad to do it. So they start with a clean slate. Um, so so what's your, have you, are, what's you your, are your people not receiving credit for their hours? Right. I need to get your information when we get done, and I'll talk with your department leadership as well, okay? Okay, so we, we are supposed to send them to our hours to the state. Get with me when we get done, because I, I, maybe I'm misunderstanding what you're saying, and I'm not trying to give bad information to everybody here. I like to talk with you in private when we're over, done, okay, okay? thank you. Trent, Trent Dilks, Department of Minnesota. Hey, Trent, uh, good to see you again. Good to see you. On the uh, VAVS hours, I just want to clarify. Right now, you just get a blank report that says the hours credited to DAV out of the VAVS volunteers and not a breakdown of the individuals? I get a letter at the end of the fiscal year from central office that says DAV and DAVA and youth have donated 1.5 million hours 
this many hours accounts for the transportation network. Yeah. That's my. That's a letter that is signed. It's an okay. official document. Currently in our facilities, we are just tracking the transportation volunteers. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a considerable expansion to to track all of the VAVS activity that's also going. Okay. I guess I didn't know the facility couldn't send the breakdown, but we'll we'll figure out how to get that in. But okay. just we wanted get, to make sure I was clear on that. We get monthly reports from. Generally, it's our VAVS rep. Sometimes it's sometimes they come directly from the program manager at the VA. But we do get that breakdown monthly. The letter that he gets at the end of the year is just a bulk total for all the hours worked across the country. Okay. Is this a monthly one individual? Or yes, is it, the okay. monthly one is individual. That's how we credit our volunteers for each of for the hours they've worked. Okay. So that, that monthly report is individual. You can generally get it from the program manager at the VA. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Trent. Is there anything else? Where's the uh, sign-up sheet at? All right. Wow. Any other questions? Please ensure we get your information on the sign-up sheet. With that being said, we'll call it a day.